In June 2020, the Constitutional Court, the highest court in South Africa, delivered a landmark judgment, changing how South Africans vote for their leaders. The Constitutional Court has declared a section of the Electoral Act as unconstitutional. Now, this paves the way for independent candidates to contest provincial and national elections. Until now, only political parties were allowed to do so. In its judgment, the court found that the part of the law that governs the elections in the country is unconstitutional as it denies South Africans the right to stand independently for the national and provincial elections. So far as it makes it impossible for candidates to stand for political office without being members of political parties, the Electoral Act is unconstitutional. Currently, elections are the sole business of political parties such as the EFF, the ANC, the Democratic Alliance and all of the 45 political parties that contested the 2019 national and provincial elections, meaning that South Africans can't contest for positions in government unless they are card-carrying members of political parties. But how did South Africa choose an electoral system that limits their power? Well, it has to do with the country's history with apartheid. Under apartheid, voting was a special privilege offered to white South Africans in an attempt to ensure that the legitimacy of the government of the National Party would go unchallenged. While the likes of Hendrik Verwoerd had imagined that they could silence the political aspirations of black South Africans, apartheid would give birth to some of the fiercest activism, producing leaders such as Winnie Matigizela Mandela, Steve Biko and Nelson Mandela. In this interview, Mandela explains the political aspirations of black South Africans. The Africans require, want the franchise, on the basis of one man, one vote, they want political independence. In 1990, in a surprise announcement to his all-white parliament, F.W. de Klerk revealed the government's plan to unban the ANC and release political prisoners such as Nelson Mandela. The announcement would make him the last apartheid president. The news would be received with shock and an uproar from parliament. But all that could not stop the imminent arrival of democracy in South Africa. The prohibition of the African National Congress, the Pan-Africanist Congress, the South African Communist Party is being rescinded. People serving prison sentences merely because they were members of one of these organizations will be identified and released. In this connection, the government has taken a firm decision to release Mr. Mandela unconditionally. And so, in 1994, after years of struggle and sacrifice, Nelson Mandela would become the first democratically elected president in South Africa. In an election in which 12 million South Africans would vote, the ANC rose to leadership, winning 62% of the vote, with the National Party, which was at the helm of apartheid, taking away 20% of the votes, and the IFP becoming the third largest party with 10% of the votes and the other 5% going to minority parties such as the Democratic Party, the PAC and the ACDP. This is one of the most important moments in the life of our country. I stand before you filled with deep pride and joy. Mr. Mandela has walked a long road and now stands at the top of the hill. As far as my own pos position is concerned, I should like to make it clear that I believe that my political task is just beginning. Despite being the last apartheid president and losing the election, he still had a significant role to play in the country's politics. This is because under the proportional electoral system, there is no single winner. All political parties contesting the elections are allocated a position according to the proportion of votes they garner. This system allows for parties with varying interests to work together in government. This is why Nelson Mandela and F.W. de Klerk, polar political opposites, were able to work together in the first democratic parliament in the country. However, the system does have drawbacks in that it centers political parties in the country's politics. In this electoral system, political parties are extremely powerful, making some question 
Why even bother with voting? Around 9 million voters aren't registered. The majority of those are young people. And now a citizen survey shows that about 4.5 million South African youngsters have no plans to vote. In the proportional party system, political parties alone have the authority to appoint leaders to parliament. And when it's time to remove them, it is again political parties and the self-interested politics that decide when the leaders would be shown the door. As such, political accountability on the part of leaders is rendered meaningless because they have to explain themselves only to their political parties. This perhaps explains why President Jacob Zuma, infamous for allegations of corruption, could survive a total of eight motions to remove him from office. The number of South Africans turning up to vote has been consistently declining. In the previous election, the South African voter turnout hit an all-time low, dropping from 87% in 1994 to 65% in 2019. The opportunity to run, as allowed for by the Constitutional Court ruling, is said to inspire some community-led leaders across the country to run for the elections independently and hopefully inspire those disillusioned by political parties to vote. Only one question now remains. Will you be contesting for the next national election?